phony environmental and conservation groups are now the biggest private landowners in the world. They lobby government to take property away from local populations, only to develop it themselves later. When the U.S. military dumps millions of gallons of nerve gas on the east coast of the U.S., they don't say a word. Thousands of companies are creating transgenetic cross-species hybrids, splicing plants, animals, and insects, and releasing the new organisms into the global biosphere, vandalizing the very genetic code of the planet. And large environmental organizations do nothing. The corporate elite of the planet intensified their push for a global taxation system with a year-long build-up to the live Earth hysteria held on July 7, 2007 on seven continents. World leaders announced that saving the Earth was the new organizing principle for humanity and hailed it as the planet's new religion. They claimed that CO2, which plants breathe, was killing the earth and that we must reduce the number of children we have to curtail our carbon footprint. Countries across the world marked the day by passing new carbon tax schemes and raising taxes on gasoline, natural gas and electricity. It is a scientific fact that the sun is the main driver of planetary climate and the measurements are clear. The sun is becoming hotter, brighter. It has been slowly increasing thermal output in the last hundred years, causing warming not just on Earth, but throughout the solar system. But the scientific facts and even the order of the planets didn't matter to one of the chief organizers of live Earth, David Mayer de Rothschild, heir to the British arm of the Rothschild fortune when we spoke to him. When I called Rothschild on the Order of the Planets, he just laughed, thinking the audience wouldn't get it. He continued to count on the population's ignorance and claimed that the global warming lobby has nothing to do with carbon taxes. I guess he hadn't spoken with his good personal friend, Al Gore. Global warming, the time for debate is over. I think what you have to realize is that, that being environmentally sensitive and making money aren't mutually exclusive. There's a lot of money to be made in, 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 in addressing this issue. But you guys are gobbling up all the world's concern to just simply line your pockets and make kids read your book in schools and do all this. It's a business, just like you said, Rothschild. It's not. Do you think I make any money out of this? It's the you same thing. It's the same thing. Your great, great, great grand, your, your money changing ancestors did. They're in Germany, Red Shield, and I'm calling you out, Red Shield. We know it's a scam. A pollution-based tax system, principally CO2. We're causing it mainly, vast majority of it. The consequences are bad and will be catastrophic unless we act. Uh, the polar ice caps of Mars have, are receding at several miles a year, much faster than ours and that the moons of Saturn and Jupiter are melting. In fact, several of their moons were ice and are now liquid seas. Now, how are SUVs causing that, David Rothschild? That's because those planets are closer to the sun, my friend. <laughs> no, um, Jupiter yeah. and Saturn are not closer to the sun. Neither is Mars. Yes, sir. I think you'll find, right, that the very simple matter, and what I wanted to say, and this is my final point, forget your taxation theory, because actually it's not taxation. Put a price on the carbon. A tax is the best way. Cap and trade can also do it. If there were a carbon-based tax, mm -hmm. would there be a need for a, a, an economy-wide cap and trade system? They are not either or. We can do both. I am in favor of both. The architects of the New World Order are in a race to complete the structure of world government so they can suppress the independent development of technologies that threaten their monopoly of power, while at the same time steering new developments in the direction the architects chart for humanity. The technocrats call their governing system the final revolution because in the past, empires were enforced militarily. 
Now enforcement is primarily psychological and economic, and society itself is a construct of the elite who operate outside the controlled paradigm and control the civilization within, just as a child maintains the environment of a fish tank. We are like lab rats living out our entire existence, never questioning the confines of the cage or the scientists who experiment on us. New World Order engineers have hijacked human destiny. His controllers have closely studied human behavior for more than a hundred years and are now steering us with expert control, using our primitive drives and desires as levers. They have developed their mind control systems to the point of being able to control the average unconscious person like a car. Eugenics dominated the 20th century. Its ruthless spirit has now metastasized into the fields of genetics, nanotech, and robotics. But that's not surprising. From their inception, all three disciplines have been dominated by eugenicists. The billionaire founder of Sun Microsystems, Bill Joy, courageously went public in 2000 to warn of a cancerous consensus among the technocratic elite that at best humanity would be completely enslaved by the year 2030, and at worst, mass extermination of everyone but the elite would take place. A who's who of the techno elite are members of what is known as the transhumanist or posthumanist movement. Many of its adherents see only the beneficial aspects of technology's exponential rise, like bringing sight to the blind, sound to the deaf, and longer life for all. But what many of them don't know is that master eugenicist Julian Huxley founded transhumanism and that society's controllers openly admit that the new system is designed to progress into absolute tyranny. Leading transhumanist Ray Kurzweil boasts that technological advancements will allow those that can afford it to live forever, but admits that most won't be able to keep up with the new master race. The drive for world government is now all about who will control and have access to radical life extension systems. Biological evolution is too slow for the human species. Over the next few decades, it's going to be left in the dust. Transhumanists believe that they will attain the fountain of youth by merging with technology. Now, it may be within their reach. Decades ago, transhumanists said that if you did not accept augmentation or enhancements, you would no longer be able to get jobs. And now it's happening today. The elite who occupy the commanding heights of digital reality are suicidal nihilists. Suicidal nihilists know that there is no longer any substantive purpose to their willing, but they would always prefer to go on willing than not to act at all. They can very happily ally themselves with a the notion of nuclear holocaust or perfect exterminism. Technology has become so powerful in its capacity for destruction that free humanity cannot afford to let psychopathic technocrats with delusions of grandeur repeat the mistakes of their forebears, because it is highly probable that this time they may destroy everything, including themselves in their mad rush for godhood. In this film, we have chronicled the overlord's bloody orgy of experimentation, which already claimed the lives of more than 150 million people in the 20th century. And now, they are promising to deliver an invincible tyranny that will dwarf their past exploits. In the days of World War II, there were sovereign nations and armies to stand against Hitler's final solution. Once world government is in place, no one will be able to stop the New World Order's plans for global population reduction. For those immune to psychological programming, hundreds of FEMA camps have already been built throughout the United States in their quest for population.